Hello everyone, my name is Silvia Cruciani. I am a robotics software engineer at Tocado Technology and I am here to talk about robotic manipulation. And in particular, I will try to explain what it is that makes this domain very challenging, but also very interesting. Let's start by trying to understand what exactly manipulation is. You might have heard the term dexterous manipulation in particular, which is common in robotics, and it refers to the skill of using our hands. For humans, it comes naturally to move our bodies according to what we want to do. And we use our hands and arms every day in many, many different ways. On the slide are a few examples. We can use a knife to peel some fruit, grab a pen to write some notes, pour milk into a cup of coffee, and a lot of other different tasks that, yes, always involve our hands grasping or handling something, but the type of motion and task is always different. How can we do all of this? We humans are a very complex and well-integrated system. We have a constant feedback loop on what we are trying to achieve, and we can correct quickly for mistakes. Let's take a look at the video. This woman wants to grasp the string of the tea bag and remove it from the mug. She manages to do this, even though at the beginning, her fingers were not actually grasping the string. I don't know if you have ever seen robot manipulators in action, but traditional robotics follows the paradigm of sense, plan, act. And this is one reason why many robotic motions seem unnatural compared to human motions that have this very uh, fast feedback loop. Uh, I will just show you a video so that you understand. Like you can see that the hand now, only now, closes. Now for this task, the sense plan act means sense, find the bottle, plan, figure out how to move towards the bottle, that is how to move the arm and hands motors at what time and when to close the hand, and act, execute the planned motion. Now in this case, and let's play the video again, if we fail to detect where the bottle is, or if we fail to plan, or if the bottle slipped away a bit too much while the hand was closing, basically, if any of the steps go wrong, the task will not succeed. What should be tried instead is a constant feedback and many, many adjustments and retrials, just like we saw in the video of the human. So as I said, humans have a tight coupling between sensors and motions, this fast feedback loop. A lot of times we perform unconscious adjustments, which are much faster than conscious decisions, just because our brain already knows how to react without even having to think about it. Think about the task of inserting and turning a key to open a door. By using our sense of touch, we can feel when the key is not sliding and if it is well inserted or not. And while we execute this task, we keep moving the key according to what we sense, but we do not spend a lot of time thinking about how exactly we should wiggle the key until when, then we finally succeed to open the door. Now I have talked about coordinating sensing and motion, but what can robots do at this point? As I said, humans are a very complex system. Robotic sensors and actuators do not have the same capability. Something that for humans comes naturally like the sense of touch, is vastly absent from robotic manipulators. It is often impossible to gather information on where the robot is in contact with the environment, simply because tactile sensors are not common and difficult to process. Moreover, you can see in the pictures, robots do not have the same hands as we do. Hands like human hands are incredibly expensive to build, and extremely challenging to control just because of all the motors and configurations involved. So you might ask, is the problem of robotic manipulation only related to getting better hardware, 
better mechanical hands, better arms, better tactile sensors, force torque sensors, cameras, will they be enough? And the answer is no. Robotics is not only hardware. Let's take a look at this image from the very first video I showed you. For the person to act in this scene, it requires scene understanding. For instance, what are we seeing? What is this scene? We need to process that visual sensor input so that we understand that we have a plate and the mug. Now that we know that, let's focus on the mug. What should we do? Grasp it? Push it? It depends on the final goal that we want to achieve. If the goal is to drink, then we must grasp the mug from the handle. And again, for us it's obvious, but for a computer to understand that one, this is the handle of the mug, and two, to complete my task, I must grasp the handle like this, is not so obvious. You might have heard of deep learning and uh, neural networks that are an incredibly powerful instrument to classify parts of an image. And it's true, they require massive amounts of data, but they can classify images very well. But let's say now that I don't particularly enjoy drinking tea while the tea bag is still in there. Now for the same goal, which is to drink the tea, what I must do is no longer grasp the handle. It is to remove the tea bag. And to remove the tea bag, I will want to use this spoon so that it does not drip on the table. Now suddenly, this is no longer a challenge of understanding where each of these things is in the image. Now it is a problem that relates to temporal sequences. So for the simple task of drinking this tea, we have already identified challenges in visual perception, scene understanding, temporal sequences, and the ones we mentioned before in motion planning, control, and coordination. So I have listed a lot of challenges, and the solutions for robotic manipulation always involve many different disciplines, such as hardware design, feedback control, computer vision, etc. And it is extremely important that all of these different disciplines work together to make the robot function. For instance, it is useless if I know there is a mug and that I can grasp the mug, if then I cannot reach it because I cannot control the motion of the hand. Now, robotic manipulation is far from perfect right now, but what can we do with it? Well, first of all, we can continue to research to make it better and better. But as a typical goal in industry is uh, to remove heavy lifting and repetitive motions that are very intense for humans and are very demanding to the body. Uh, Okado Group provides cutting edge technology solutions for online grocery. And for this industry, the challenge is picking and packing of groceries, which means handling any item from a small apple to a huge pack of six bottles of water. Now you're thinking about picking and packing, but it is much harder than it looks. The robot must be able to grasp and manipulate items of different shapes, sizes, weights, different deformability and fragility, and they need to perform with human speed and accuracy. And it also means that the robot cannot just accidentally damage or break products. So this involves a lot of the challenges that I have mentioned before. I'll show you this video of a prototype of a robotic system for picking and packing. We can identify all the challenges I have mentioned before applied to this pick and pack task. The robot is equipped with a suction cap and it also has a camera sensor. So here you see the robot moving and there are even other robots around. So it has to coordinate between what it sees and what is happening in the environment. It has to recognize that that box was the product it wanted to pick. And once it picks, it needs also to successfully find where the object has to be placed. Now, as I said, this robot is equipped with a simple suction cap. Adding grippers or hands increases the challenge 
but makes the robot capability closer to that of a human. And especially so, if instead of using only metal parts, we try to make robotic hands softer. But this comes with increased challenges in sensor perception, control, and planning because of extra unpredictable deformations. So what we can say is that robotics manipulation is far from being a solved problem, and it is a field full of interesting challenges and applications. After all of this walking through the challenges of robotic manipulation, I hope you're now very interested in the topic and that you will all want to know more about it. Thank you very much for listening.